Yo boys, what's up? Today we're talking about the switch again and especially about overclocking. I uploaded a video yesterday showing off some cool new mods for the Switcher or the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for the Nintendo Switch and some people or one guy wrote uh, that it wouldn't be safe to overclock etc. And that is just a total conspiracy theory that has nothing to do with reality. If it comes to that stuff, it's really good to rely on people who have actual empiric data or scientific data. And for this you can go over to the guys from Digital Foundry, which are absolutely amazing. Those nerds are analyzing everything, really everything what comes out. And they are overclocking their switches and they um, say it's absolutely safe and it is. So usually if the switch is under full load, it goes up to about 60 degrees Celsius. The thing is, when you overclock it, it goes up to about 64 degrees Celsius. So, there is a point where the console just would shut off, but that point is far away. It's 80 or 90 degrees, I think, so it's absolutely safe to do it. I don't know why I waited that long, but I remember in the beginning it was not available for X as XOS and now it is available for SXOS so um, super happy yesterday I installed it or the day before and now so many games become more interesting with this technique that I found out to flag the console as actually docked and then overclock it and then run it in portable nevertheless so you get extremely crisp visuals and stable frame rates. And the next game that I tried out, and it will not be the last one, and I'm going to show you in another video, is Doom 2016. I love that game. It's my favorite shooter on the Nintendo Switch, I have to say. I'm kind of looking forward to Doom Eternal, but on the other hand, I really don't like the style that they were going for with that game. It, it's way too gamey for my taste, and I enjoy the heck out of the design of Doom. It's gritty, it's... It just has that something, so stay tuned for that video that will come out today as well. And I'm just gonna check it. I tested it already extensively, and it's an absolute blast. It looks so good and plays so good. It looks like a PlayStation 4 version. If you take the screen size um, and compare it to, let's say, a big 1080p screen that you're sitting three meters away from or something like that. You know, the dots per inch are probably higher on the Nintendo Switch with its 720p panel. And it just looks fantastic. And it is basically a Switch Pro because every game that you throw at it, most of them have dynamic resolution if they're graphic intensive. And um, uh, you can just give it overhead so it looks crisp all the time. The next game that I want to try is for sure Wolfenstein and Wolfenstein uh, Youngblood. I actually uninstalled Youngblood because it was so unplayable for me. Like, I really... It, it, if games get degraded to a certain degree, then it's like it's not becoming really nice to play them for me with a PlayStation 4, with two high-end PCs, you know. There are so many possibilities for me to play those games. So, if it's not proper, then I'm not gonna play it. In the case of The Witcher, for example, I love the experience. It's just like Skyrim. It's absolutely stable enough now with the overclocks and the graphic enhancement and the additional post-processing processing menu. It's just fantastic. But even in its vanilla state, it was so enjoyable. And I'm gonna play through it again. And this time with Hearts of Stone and the other expansion that I didn't play through yet. So I prefer those titles. When it comes to Youngblood or something, I didn't want to play it. Now with the overclock, it's a complete different story. Back to the beginning of the video where I was talking actually about is it safe to overclock the video, uh, the, the Nintendo Switch. And yes, it is. There is nothing more to say. For the people who say that it wouldn't be, most likely they have a switch that is not unlocked and they feel a little bit envy or something like that. This is the only explanation what I have for that because we know from Digital Foundry, from Eurogamer, from those reliable sources that it's absolutely safe. When Nintendo designed the switch, they have to put a lot of overhead inside 
Uh, that doesn't mean that it's unsafe. It's just by design you need that if you build a console like that. The same thing goes for the Vita. It was the same thing. And I overclocked the Vita to death. I overclocked it a lot. And my Vita still is in my living room next to my PlayStation 4, sitting on its stand and is waiting for me to get picked up again and be played with overclocks because this, the same thing goes for uh, for the Vita with the dynamic resolution in some cases and the better frame rates. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you still think it's unsafe to, to unclock the uh, Nintendo Switch because it isn't, I can tell you straight away. But nevertheless, let me think, let me know what you think in the comment section below and uh, give me some suggestions of really graphic intensive games that need overclocking. I have Zelda Breath of the Wild that I want to try out, the two Wolfensteins. What else would make sense to overclock that I also really enjoy? There's, for, for example, Xenoblade. Maybe, but yeah, not the biggest fan of Japanese RPGs. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then just support me by giving a shout out in the comment section below, leaving a like, subscribing and hitting that bell button. That bell is super important because only if you hit that bell you're gonna get notifications about new videos from us. And we are actually changing the YouTube channel. We have some new people uh, coming in and it's gonna be called Game Noids and we're gonna have our own website and everything. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Boom!